Well, welcome back to the studio. I am standing on my ladder painting this piece. It's a four foot tall by six foot wide painting and I am working on the Boa Convia. This is a painting that I'm doing for a couple in Santa Fe and this, home, this house was actually her grandfather built this house in Slovenia and it's in a little village called Pus. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly which is inland and then we've moved it to the coast and are showing the village of Peron in the background. But the, there's a bougainvillea draping down over the roof and so I have already painted the sky with the upper part of the sky is cobalt blue plus white and then the lower part is phthalo blue plus white. I guess actually both of those mixtures have more of the white than the color, but anyway, it's painted in the gallery wrap style, and so you can see I'm painting on the top edge of the canvas here, and that's one of the reasons I have to stand on the ladder, because the Bougainvillea and the sky and all, they extend up and over onto the edge of the canvas. So this enables me to see the top there, and this is these are mixtures of Magenta plus permanent rose plus white and then permanent rose plus white. That gives me nice, that perfect color for Bougainvilleas. And I'm just walking it in. You can see that I have my sketch of my building in there. And I had originally sketched that up onto the canvas with a mixture of my mud, which is two parts of ultramarine blue and one part of alizarin crimson plus liquid. That's dry now, so it's easy to, to work over it and not obliterate my sketch. I had somebody ask me about that, using the term mud for that purple mixture. He said that's really purple or a neutral color. And the reason that we call that mud is Jack used a lot of pain developing this, our color mixing system, our double primary color mixing system. And he said, I. There's an old saying in Texas, you throw a lot of mud against the wall, some of what sticks, use it. And uh, so that's why he came up with that term mud, because he threw a lot of paint on canvas, working out the color mixtures and everything, and the ones that stuck are like mud sticking on the wall. So that's, that's where that term comes from, and that's why we have always called that the mud. So I just am wanting to show you how I block my bougainvillea in. Again, this is these mixtures. I use large brush and I want to paint that into my sky color so that it softens these edges coming back. I'll paint that side when I can get around that side. Then the, the foliage, I'm going to get some tissue here and wipe my brush out. I use a lot of this tissue. And I wipe my brush, put it in there, wipe it again because I'm changing color. Get some more tissue here. Weird standing up this high. These are mixtures of Viridian Green plus Thalo Blue. This gives me a really cool green, cool in temperature green for the foliage of the Bougainvillea. And I can use. Even though this is a big brush, I can use the corner of that brush to make fairly small brush strokes. Right now I'm just blocking this in. I want to get this top part covered so I can be off the ladder. I really don't like being on the ladder. It's not that I'm afraid of heights. I just It's easier to work being down lower. This will all be pretty much dark over here. I may have a few little sky holes coming through, but I pretty much want that to be dark. My light is coming in from the right. So this all being dark on this left side stops the light from sliding out of the painting. It also works to keep the viewer's eye. The viewer's eye comes in, follows the light into the painting, and then hits this dark and circles back into the rest of the painting. So that's a design element that is used. 
But anyway, this just kind of shows you how I start blocking in my, my bovendia. Some lighter colors here. If you ever have questions, please feel free to ask them in the comments section. And I just really appreciate you watching my YouTube videos. Visit my blog. The, the link is in the description below. The address is also on the final frame of my video. And you can also subscribe to my blog. You'll get an email every time I put up a new post. And I show the complete step-by-step -step process of this painting. I know a lot of you have asked, oh, well, where's, we want to see the rest of it, or where's, you know, we want to see painting the roof or painting the building. If you'll subscribe to my blog, you'll get all of that information. So you have a wonderful, wonderful day, and thank you again for watching my videos.